Hello everyone, and welcome to my little extra movie review this week. Um, as I explained in my other video, uh, Courtney Garrett picked a movie which I'm not going to watch this week. Um, so, as I know this is one of her favourite films of all time, I've decided to re-watch The Cabin in the Woods, uh, which is one of my favourite horror films because it is so meta and so awesome. I've already done one review for it, it was in fact my first ever DeFranco Movie Club review, link to that somewhere on stream. Um, and I'm just going to talk about my thoughts again because I love this film and it feels like I could put a lot of thoughts into it. Um, one of the things I didn't really comment on last time was the cast in this is extraordinary. Um, there is um, the MVP for this film is obviously um, Fran Kranz. I can never pronounce his name right, but I love him. I think he's charming. He has some of the best lines, like, "Yeah, I just decapitated that guy with a shovel." Um, no, was it dismembered that guy with a shovel? And like all of the best lines come from him. Um, but the cast overall, of course, they're your attractive teen slash college students. Um, who are maybe slightly too old, but they work within that meta-genre bending trope setting universe. Um, I love the, just the cast of the staffers, uh, the ones that are just particularly, I mentioned Amy Acker last time, but all of the cast of the staffers who can manage to kind of create this mundane sense of normalcy, which is very much kind of like an audience reaction to seeing a horror movie in many ways where they're like they're almost drawn to emotions but then tequila is my lady and they just go back to their normal life that sort of blank you know yep she's being tortured I looked at my wrist there's no watch but you get the idea um it, it, it's very meta and I like the fact that this in many ways is kind of like um the last action hero and um, the never ending story in that it is a commentary on audience um, awareness and audience um, participation, the fact that we're asking continuously uh, for something that we know is going to be dark, we know is going to be grim, you know that people are going to die and it's going to be horrendous and yet we're still paying to go see the same thing. We're still watching the same things even though we know that the whore is going to die and the black guy is going to die. Um, we're always going to the cinema looking for the same tropes and enjoying the same tropes. I mean, I'm not a movie fan, a horror movie fan, but I can see those tropes and I can see why they are enjoyed. I just, yeah, there, there was a couple of scenes in this where I was like, I don't want them to die again, and yet I'm watching the film again. And it's a, it's a very self-referential, very meta loop, and I really, really like that. Um, it's a very clever film. It's very cynical, um, very witty. Um, I love the cameo at the end of this film. And it's made by an actress who, um, she's very good at her last scene cameos. If you've seen the um, the film Pool um, with Sean Pegg and Nick Frost, uh, it's, it's that, that actress. And she's very good at that last minute. Just She brings such a sense of authority and power to a sci-fi world that I just, I really love seeing her character appear there. Um, I love the kind of ridiculous size of the kind of problem so you can understand where the staffers are coming from, you can understand where our heroes are coming from um, and so the end kind of dilemma is a really potent one and I like how they say you know what it's time for a new slate, it's time to go back to Lovecrafting days and just get it over with if we're in a state of reality where people are willing to watch other people be tortured and are completely oblivious to it that is a point where perhaps humanity needs a reboot um, and I really like that sort of final message. It's a very well written, very clever, very well directed horror film. There are definitely some moments that are genuinely scary, like um, when there's the, the zombie girl and she goes in and out of the moonlight, um, followed by some really like witty interpretations on movie set making, things like the way that they just moonlight, because blue is of course a romantic colour for moonlit scenes, they turn up the blue tones and they turn up the temperature and all those things to initiate where things come from. I like how they took these classic character tropes and mess with them. I love the music, I love the writing, I just really really enjoyed this film. As someone who's not that big a fan of horror films, I have watched more horror films since and I do enjoy this film more since my last viewing and my last viewing was a pretty damn good review. Um, as in a positive review, I don't know how good my review was, that's your opinion not mine. Um, I thought it was an okay review. Anyway, I'm gonna stop talking. Um, I really enjoyed this film, it did give me nightmares last night. Um, but that might have also been because I was slightly tipsy and I just started watching The Shining. Um, so a combination of drinking late night, 
um, coming in the woods and the shining equals bad dreams who knew anyway um <laughs> this video is ramblier than normal but I'm just gonna let it go because I assume that I've said something relatively interesting at some point feel free down to comment down below what you thought of this film if you've seen it um, what's your favorite horror film that kind of gender like messes with the tropes of the horror genre um, and I will see you guys all very soon bye guys <laughs>